Hi, I'm Georgia Lemmer. I'm a naturopath and nutritionist. I help busy women to get more energy, whether that's because you're going through perimenopause or you're adrenally fatigued. I use natural medicines such as diet and lifestyle, herbal and nutritional medicine to get women to feel better than ever. I'm Georgia Lima and this is my story. Welcome to the Fair Business Australia podcast. Future proof your business, impact your community. I'm your host, Rebecca Lloyd. Welcome Fair Business Australians to another episode of the Fair Business Australia podcast. Ladies, how do you go when you start getting a little bit older? Yes, we start applying the false eyelashes. Yes, we wear clothes that are kind to our little bellies. However, what do we do about the subject of energy? We all know that when we come into our late 30s, early 40s and beyond, the energy drip dips dramatically. And so today I have asked my very own actual naturopath, Georgia Limmer, to come on the show to talk to us about energy levels, what we can do as women who are approaching that uh, horrendous swear word in my books, perimenopause and beyond. So Georgia, welcome to the show today. Thank you for coming to be my guest. Well, thank you for having me, Rebecca. What an honour. Love to have you. So you are a naturopath working out of Vibe Health. Now, I've already set the scene for the ladies that are experiencing energy loss amongst other things. Uh, but what does it look like as a woman when you're getting older and your hormones start to change? Mm -hmm. What are some of the fairly common uh, complaints that women come to you with? Yeah, I guess the signs and symptoms would be lack of energy. Um, sometimes people might even describe that as exhaustion or even burnout. Mm. Um, uh, maybe a bit more moody, a bit more irritable. <laughs> um, sometimes sometimes a bit of um, central adiposity. So that's that middle, you know, that spare tire around the middle. Mm. Um, and these are all signs of hormone fluctuations. And it's almost like going through perimenopause is like going through second puberty. So it can be a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Yeah, right. So when I went to Georgia with a couple of these ailments, um, yeah. burnout, I didn't know that actually. Yeah. Uh, she said, oh, you know, your age and you just perimenopause. I said, I'm sorry, pardon? <laughs> perimenopause, like, I'm only 43, what? I said, how do you reverse it? She said, oh, no, there's no reversing it. So talk to us about this <laughs> second puberty that we are so blessed to yes. be going through as women. Well, if you remember the first puberty, it's uh, we're teenagers. We don't have a lot of responsibilities. So mm. as we're you know older women, um, we got mortgages. We've got aging parents. You know bills to pay. So there's mm. just there's just more on us, and um, we still have to go through all those hormonal changes. So it's just it's a little bit more tricky <laughs> to navigate. <laughs> mm. Mm. So what are some of the um, what are some of the stories that women come to you with where they don't realise that it's a hormonal maybe? Is it an imbalance or is it just a natural progression of yeah. ageing as a woman? Some people might come to me and they, they're just talking about my I'm, I'm starting to get anxiety and I never used to feel like this before. Oh, wow. um, some people might just yeah describe a little bit of weight gain. Yeah. Um, some people are just, I, I just don't have energy. Um, all I've got energy for is going to work and that's just no no way to live a life. So, um, I mean, all of these, it, it, it's so broad what people can present with in perimenopause, but um, mm. everybody will have their one pain point and that's kind mm. of what, um, you know, as a naturopath, that's how I would approach their health concerns. Mm. So I'm, I'm actually learning stuff today. Uh, talk to us about uh, anxiety because I thought anxiety was just a COVID thing for me or a working too hard or whatever that is. I'm very much an A-type personality. But why anxiety? Is that something that um, just has to be managed or can that be absolutely alleviated with the correct supplements? Well, um, when we're so when we're in our fertile years, we have a hormone called progesterone and that comes in at the second half of the cycle, so just after ovulation, and it's really there to keep a pregnancy in place if there is one. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, thank you, Mother Nature, but the progesterone makes us feel really good. I would call it our hormonal chill pill. So, um, yeah. and as we're, as we're going through perimenopause and we're, you know, no longer as fertile, we, the progesterone just drops away and we just, we just don't need it anymore. Mm. So that little, that's a little bit of a rocky period for us. Um, but then after menopause, you don't need progesterone anymore at all, but 
we're having we have other things that come into place, other hormones that so it's just really all it is is the shifting in hormones. So it just feels a bit uncomfortable while we're while we're in those kind of that shift. Mm. So um, you say that we don't need progesterone anymore. I kind of like my progesterone. Yeah. If that's going to give me like more energy and less anxiety, what yeah. can women like myself mm-hmm. do to get that chill and get yes. that energy if it's not Sorry. being produced naturally? Yeah, there would be, that's really two, there's two sort of um, op, like, uh, I guess, strategies there. First would be if you think about stress levels, and, you know, we've just talked about how we're all busy women. Mm. Um, managing stress levels would be the top of the tree uh, way to sort of manage all hormones because cortisol, our stress hormone, and adrenaline, adrenaline is what makes you, um, you know, be able to run away from the saber-toothed tiger, but cortisol is the thing that lets you know that it's an emergency and you should go. Right. Um, so cortisol, healthy stress levels, like stress is healthy, like we all need stress because it is how we don't walk out into traffic and, you know, or, right. you know, we, we, we meet our deadlines right. <laughs> we go there and go, Ooh, let them sail by. Yeah. Um, so, uh, cortisol is like, it's a little bit of a greedy hormone. So it'll actually yeah. take all of our nutrients that we need to make all of our other steroid hormones. So estrogen, progesterone, kind of, you know, all of, all of our, um, testosterone even. So, um, yeah, it gets everything first because <laughs> it's, it's survival. So managing cortisol is probably the first strategy of helping people to gain more energy. Yep. Um, but also like looking at the diet and looking at potentially nutrients and herbs that may help support energy, um, but always like a food first approach. Like so commonly in women of our age, um, we're looking at getting a better protein serve at breakfast. And the little line I usually use in my clinical practice is um, have protein breakfast in the morning and because it will serve you later in the day. So people who sort of get that 3.30-itis, um, if they just have a bigger protein serve at breakfast, they probably won't go through that slump in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So uh, does adrenal fatigue play into that for women, again, like myself, who have just pushed way, way, way too hard? You're trying to juggle family, you're trying to juggle business, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. So, so how does one, is that literally just rest? Is that diet? Is that just harden up princess and get over? Like, how do you do that? How yeah. do you manage and recover from adrenal fatigue? Yeah, it's absolutely not a harden up princess. People who've gotten to the point of adrenal fatigue, they have pushed through all the signs and um, that they should have slowed down mm. um, because they're usually the type A personality type um, and they've literally got a big hormonal imbalance at those life-saving hormones, which are adrenaline and cortisol. So this, mm. you can go through stages first of insufficiency. So the hormones, just you just can't produce enough to manage what you're you got on your plate mm. and then you get to that almost total um adrenal fatigue state mm. yeah, which and is so, um, yeah, bottoming so this, out really <laughs> yes yes i hear you so this is not a one size fits all approach obviously uh you wouldn't just have one doctor say stuff for 25 million people the same with naturopathy but um, do you have any uh anecdotal evidence of women who came to you with mm-hmm. adrenal fatigue came to you with cortisol issues, came to you with um, anxiety. And I know you've just said, okay, more protein at breakfast, but what are the other things that we could be putting in place whilst we prepare to actually go and see a naturopath, ladies, because your your energy and your good mental health actually matters. It will help you be better at work. It will help you be a better mother. It will help you be a better friend, a better wife and partner. We don't want to be with our men all the time. So what stories do you have to share with us about helping women to overcome those issues? Yeah, so um, like I said before, always diet first. So um, not just protein in, um, in the morning, but protein at every sitting, like so even snacks. And um, some it, it, like it's almost like how long is a piece of string? Like where, where are your energy um, issues coming from? Mm. So that could be something like um, liver health. So if you've got a sluggish liver, yeah, you just, you're going to feel a bit... Um, 
slow and wrong. You know, there's also like thyroid issues that could be addressed, um, even blood sugar regulation. So just making sure, and this this would be my little energy strategy for most women, would be having sort of smaller, more regular meals mm. um, and making sure that each sitting you've got some protein in that serve. Like so mm. even, the, even your snacks, like where's the protein? And that's probably the trickiest one because carbs are easy to find. They're everywhere. Um, but re- like if you know if, if you could maybe have a handful of nuts with your apple or something like that, that would be a really perfectly balanced, energizing snack. Um, and yeah, that would be, I guess, a couple of tactics that people could think about checking into mm. regarding food. But um, in in other um, aspects, yeah, looking at um, potentially like any deficiencies. So um, I would I always look at people's blood tests because you can learn a lot about what you've actually got on board. And so I'd look at definitely your iron panel. <laughs> That's um, a no-brainer. But thyroid markers, um, liver function test, um, blood blood glucose regulation and you know any other deficiencies like b12 that's one that's going to give you a bit of energy as well so um just go into your gp get a standard blood test and just see if there's anything going on that would be a pretty good tip i would say for helping manage energy levels mm. um and then other other than that like in your in the diet looking at bright colorful foods like lots of of um, lots of bright, colourful things like, you know, making sure that there's something purple in the fridge. <laughs> so that's a, a more tricky one. But, um, yeah, reds and yellows and greens, um, just lots of antioxidants in your diet. Yeah, wow. Rainbow food, ladies and gentlemen, or ladies. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So what about uh, why is it so important to have a whole bunch of smaller meals throughout the day? Because I, I get busy. Yeah. I can work and work and work and I just don't get hungry. And then it's like, oh, girl, you got to eat. So I have this big bowl of whatever. Yes. But you're saying to me that I should be having like six small meals a day. Why is that so important? So if you think about like um, every time you eat food, so we eat um, energy, uh, energy comes in, like we have a little spike and then it drops off again. What we'd actually like to see um, in in getting good quality energy throughout the day would be more like a gentle wave mm-hmm. rather than big spikes and drops. So um, either point at the high or the low is inflammation. So inflammation can be a big driver of right. chronic disease for starters, but also you can really feel it in your energy. So if, you're, if your body's fighting something, yeah, this inflammation, which would be that sort of first step of an immune response. Yeah, um, you, you're going to feel that too. That's taking energy away from like the f- fun times with your friends or your family. So, yeah, yeah, which particularly if you're struggling with adrenal fatigue, those two markers they mm. don't feel like they're massive markers because you've just lived yeah. that for a long time. So this is really retraining your brain as well to Absolutely. to listen to your body. Mm-hmm. We don't listen to our body a lot of the time, ladies. I know I certainly don't. And I mentioned, I was talking about female hormones earlier, but all of those other hormone signals that contribute to our energy, like um, leptin and ghrelin, which would be appetite and and, um, appetite suppression, Mm. Um, but also, yeah, the thyroid. So that's our um, metabolism, um, you know, that little gland in in our, sits on the front of our throat there. Um, That controls our, that's our master metabolizer that controls where we spend our energy and if we store it. So sometimes, especially in sort of like um, cortisol, which is that stress hormone dysregulation, um, your body sort of goes, are we are we running away from an enemy? Should I be storing energy? Because she hasn't fed me for a little while, so maybe I should just put some of this away for later. And, yeah, one of those really convenient places for the body to store energy is <laughs> around your middle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, body. <laughs> Thanks, body. <laughs> so, so clever. <laughs> yeah. So we've talked about, you know, we've talked about the what, we've talked about the why, we've talked about the how. Now I'd like to quickly address the who. So first mm-hmm. of all, have you got any good stories of, of yeah. women who actually did what they were told? Ladies didn't just go to the naturopath or the doctor and they say da-da-da-da and we go, Oh, okay. And then we just go back to our terrible habits. Do you have any good stories? And then we'll move on to who is Georgia Limmer? How can you find her? All that kind of stuff. Um, 
I've actually got a cool story that happened just the other day. So I thought I might start with this one because this was like that almost instant gratification kind of person. Um, I mixed up some herbs. So um, we use in like an energy case, we use um, adaptogen herbs, adrenal tonics. So you might, yeah, these sound like weird words, tonics and adaptogens, but um, they're very common in natural medicine. Um, And uh, because I'm really evidence-based, I want to know that this has worked in clinical trials. So um, I mixed up this herbal formula for this um, client and she couldn't wait. She tasted it because I also talk it up that the herbs don't taste very nice. So just managing expectations there. Um, So she tasted it and then she kind of lingered around for a little bit um, in the in the clinic waiting room. And then she stopped me about 10 minutes later and she says, oh my gosh, I can just feel my brain has lit up. <laughs> wow. So that may be a little bit of that sort of, um, maybe a little bit of placebo effect, but she, she really um, thought that she was feeling better after just a few moments. And I found that really interesting because one of the herbs that I put in her tonic was actually for, it was called lion's mane and it's for, for lighting up your brain. <laughs> so Wow, that's so cool. Isn't it so wonderful, ladies, when your brain does switch on? Because I know with the, the words and you're like the, you know, that thing, what's that thing? You have to ask a young person, what is it that I'm talking about? <laughs> so give us another story of a, of, a, of a happy ending. Yeah, and commonly um, I'll prescribe uh, often B vitamins. So that's probably something else that ever, anyone who's feeling like really fatigued at at currently, they could um, yeah. pop down and get themselves some just some B complex. That's a stress formula. It's going to yeah. support all of all of your energy, the citric acid cycle, just support your energy. But um, you know, I'll give people things like a diet. But I always kind of say, you know, this diet plan, like it's not going to work instantly. So we'll just give you a little bump up with some nutrients. Mm. Um, and like I'm, I am addressing those citric acid cycle nutrients in at that point. Um, and then, yeah, give them some herbs. And I say, you might not feel anything straight away, but after a few days, like, just let me know. And sometimes, um, and this is pretty common as well, people don't actually notice how much better they're feeling because you always notice how bad you're feeling, but you don't always notice when you're making improvements. Yes. Until they decide to stop taking their herbs, um, yes. maybe a little bit prematurely, um, or they ran out and then they ring me and they're like, I need some more of those herbs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's my energy yeah. gone? So yeah. it's not that I'm propping you up. I'm actually toning a system, making you feel, um, bit repairing sort of um, signaling pathways so that you actually have long lasting results rather yes. than just, um, you know, otherwise you just drink coffee, right? <laughs> I love that. I can say this. I don't know if Georgia can say this, but I just want to linger on that for a moment. Georgia isn't masking symptoms mm. with you know, coffee, alcohol, or this is not Georgia word, this is my words, with, you know, Western type weird stuff at times that that just loves to mask. Georgia is actually repairing and retraining your natural system, which is so important. And I love that Georgia says that because I actually fall into that boat because I've stopped my vitamins because I ran out and I was just too busy to do that self-care and go and get some. So I actually am going to be calling you very shortly (laughs) to come down and get some B12 for my little A-type personality. (laughs) So how do people find you? Where are you located? I know you're at Vibe Health, but for everyone else on the call, how do they locate you? How do they come to see you? What do they need to have in place? Like do they need to have a letter from their doctor? Like how accessible are you? How many people do you have on your books? Can you take more? Mm-hmm. Well, naturopathy is private practice. So we um, you don't need any referral from a GP. You just um, make an appointment and come and see a naturopath. Um, you may, if you have any recent pathology results, like, like just recent blood test, mm. um, I, I usually like to see a copy of that because if it's kind of in the last year, it's still significant and it shows me a bit of history about what's been going on. Um, so Vibe Natural Health is down on Days Road, 210 Days Road, Grange. Um, we've got a full reception team there. 
And we've actually just recently opened um, an out of hours GP. So if you don't have a GP, pop in after hours. Um, Dr. Anchita Kamaka is the new owner of Vibe and she's absolutely fantastic. Um, and you can, it's actually like a one stop shop now because you can get your blood tests done there as well now. Wow. Yeah, which that's is great. Kind of yeah. So convenient. And after hours, you A type ladies that love to work <laughs> until six o'clock at night. <laughs> That's awesome. Exactly. So do you have any parting um, words of wisdom? Because I'm sure people are going to absolutely want to reach out to you. Do you do tele-appointments for ladies that are a little bit I far do. away? I see people all across Australia. Um, right. Yeah, from Perth to Melbourne to Darwin, so all over the place. And sometimes they're in Brisbane, but they just don't want to come into the clinic. So, <laughs> you know, okay. when we're busy and having an appointment in our lunch break, yep, that's yeah. um, that's also doable. Ah, oh, so good. No excuses, ladies. No excuses. Do you have any parting words before we let you go today for these sure. fabulous ladies who want to reclaim their energy yes. and uh, regulate and retrain their body? Yeah. So somebody who um, somebody who's adrenally fatigued, this is not for you because you actually just need to rest. But if you are verging or you're just lacking a bit of energy, sometimes it's just a really good idea to act as if you've got energy. So maybe going for a walk because using energy like that makes energy. So um, maybe we could all hop off, pop off our desks today and pop out and have a little exercise. <laughs> oh, such parting words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Georgia, for okay. coming on the show today. I really look forward to hearing probably some more stories about ladies that will have come to you out of this podcast and then have some success with it. And you can share uh, what that may be. Um, thank you so, so, so much. I look forward to seeing yeah. you again. I'll yeah. let you go because I'm mindful of your time and I know you've got clients very shortly. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, or ladies, thank you so much again for checking in to this Fair Business Australia podcast. If you are a business owner or a community leader and you would like to share your story on the podcast, reach out to us. We would love, love, love to have you, love to introduce you to an audience of around 120,000 and growing people. Uh, look forward to speaking with you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Remember, you're awesome. Chat soon. And God bless. Have you got a great business or community initiative you'd like to share with our podcast audience? We'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us today at fairbusinessaustralia.com.au.